Hey there, it's Sam. HTML and CSS are great, but if you want to bring in more features to your website, you also need JavaScript. We'll learn to write our very first JavaScript program in this lesson. I've created a very simple website here, and it's currently running on a live server extension on VS Code. Let's open up the Dev2, either right-click and click on Inspect, or hit F12. What we want to focus on in this lesson is the console panel. So if you don't see the console panel, at the bottom, simply click on this button, and toggle to display it, or just hit the escape key. Now let's learn to print some text to the console. Let's open our VS Code. First thing we need is to include the script tag inside our HTML document. You can technically put this in any way you like, but it's a standard practice that we put it inside the body tag. The first concept I want to introduce you is the concept of function. Programming functions are very similar to factories. A factory would take in something, process it, and return you something back. A function is exactly the same. It takes in an input, do some processing, and return you something back. Now, the first function we're going to learn is called the console log function. As you can already tell, it simply logs something in the console. To use this function, we simply type in console.log round bracket and type in some text surrounded by quotation mark. If you don't surround the text by quotation mark, JavaScript wouldn't be able to understand that you're trying to write a text and your program will fail. And now we've printed out hey yeah in the browser console. There is quite a bit going on here. Let's break it down bits by bits. So the browser has got a lot of built-in interfaces for us to work with different things inside the browser. And console is one of them. The link is in the description if you want to explore more about the interfaces. There is a lot of them, but you do not need to learn them all at once. We will be learning more about them in the future videos. In here, we're only interested in a log function inside a console interface. The dot allow us to access functions and properties inside the interface. And what we're after here is a log function, which let us print anything we want inside a console. Putting a round bracket after a function allow us to run it, and we can put in anything we want inside the round bracket as the input. The semicolon at the end of the line tells JavaScript is the end of the line. It is optional, but it's recommended that we put it at the end of every line. Looking at the documentation, you can also call different functions from the console interface. For example, if I use console.error, we'll see a different behavior in the console. Console.info is similar to console.log, and console.warn will give us a warning sign. The next concept I want to introduce you is called variables. In short, variables are temporary location to store data. There are three ways to declare a variable. The first way is to use the lat keyword followed by the variable name and equal to some value. Now the hey variable stands for magic and I can put it inside the console log straight away. As you can see, we get magic inside the console. The second way of declaring a variable is to use the const keyword, which stands for constant. The syntax is similar, so we type in const, the variable name and equal to some value again. The difference between lat and const is that we can reassign the value of a lat variable, but not a const variable, because const is a constant and it's not meant to be changed. So we we'll use a const variable for things like app config and so on. The third way to declare a variable is use a var keyword. Similar to lat variables, var variables can also be reassigned. I don't recommend you to use a var keyword when declaring a variable. There's a huge reason behind this, and it will be discussed in a future video. But for now, all you need to know is var variable will cause a lot of issues and you should always stick to const or let. Now here's a question. Why do we need variables? Variables can save us a lot of time when we want to repeat the same data over and over again. For example, I'm currently repeating the word hey ya for quite a bit of time down there. So what I can do better is to store hey ya in a variable and reference it in the following console functions. The benefit of this is that if I want to change hey ya at some point in the future into some other words, all I need to do is to change the value of my variable in one place instead of going through all the console functions. There are two more things that I need you to know before we end the lesson. The first thing is we cannot start a variable name with a number or special character. The only special characters allowed are the dollar sign and the underscore. Variable names are also case sensitive. So hey with a capital H and hey with a lowercase h refer to different variables. The last thing I want to talk about is variable declaration and variable assignment. Declaration simply means that we're just letting JavaScript know that this variable exists. An assignment is when we assign a value to a declared variable. We will typically combine these two steps in one go, just like what we did before, but sometimes we do need to split them up. So the next time when you see me creating a new variable without giving it a value, don't freak out, I'm just declaring a new variable. Key takeaway for this lesson, we can only write JavaScript code inside the script tags of a HTML document. Functions takes in an input, process it, and may or may not return an output. For example, the console log function takes in an input, prints it to the console, but it's not returning us anything back. 
we can temporarily store data inside variables. That's it for this lesson. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again shortly. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for your support.